Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm here today to share with you uh, my Tuesday, uh, Teach Me Tuesday. Sorry, I've got, um, Facebook is trying to ask me something right in the middle of my saying hello. Hey, Kathy, I, I apologize for being a couple of minutes late. Um, yeah, I could give you the whole reason why, but I won't bore you with all those details. Hey, Susan, thank you so much for being here today. And Sarah is here, so welcome, welcome. I'm hoping for a good internet connection. It's rainy and cloudy here today in San Antonio, which is actually something that's typically um, good for us. Hey, Jeanette, because we always need rain, and so I won't, uh, I won't complain about the rain ever, but sometimes we end up, at our house at least, we end up with some kind of, sometimes a bit of an unstable internet connection. So I'm hoping that all is going to go well. I've got a ton of things to show you today, and I'm super excited. So today is Teach Me Tuesday. Once again, I have a fun fold for you. And uh, once again, we are delving into the new in colors. Uh, I'm still um, hanging on to a couple of retiring things that I will share with you today. And I'm just looking and thinking I probably have a stamp and blend marker over on my design center that I need to grab hold of. Hey Gail, I'm glad you're here today. Glad to hear that your class packet made it to you. Velma, welcome, welcome. Okay, let me go ahead and bring the camera down because it might take me a minute or two to get situated with my setup so that you can see everything that is on my um, design table here. Probably a bit of a mess, but let's see. Oh, not too bad. Actually, it's showing up really nicely today. I think getting the hang of this new um, this new setup that I have, so that's encouraging. And I welcome feedback about like lighting and things like that because sometimes what happens is if I get too much light, it kind of washes everything out, fades all the colors. Hey, Crystal, I'm glad you're here today. So let me go over a couple of things and then we're gonna jump into what we are stamping today. Um, you can see my little new in color combo chart. I've already had somebody asking me to mail these to them and I have a download that I can share with you, uh, but somebody had said, well, you know what? I don't have a printer. So anyway, I'm kind of wrapping my head around how I can share these with people in a printed format if anybody's interested in that, because of course that means I've got to print it and I've got to mail it and all that good stuff, but we will get there. A couple of things really quick as we head into our stamping. So this is, many of you guys have been hearing about my fundraiser that I'm running for my friend and teammate, uh, Martha Sines, um, who uh, she laid him to rest on uh, Sunday was his visitation. And um, just a precious time for people gathering. And I so appreciate um, those who have already joined my fundraiser. So this is a quick and easy five card class, all in black and white. All you need is a black ink pad. Um, it's $25 and that is mailed to you. Everything you need to create this class. So this is a card kit that you can get by mail for $25 postage included. Now, if you don't want to stamp this, then I also have an option for $25 where you could, I have helpers who are going to stamp these for you, assemble them, mail them like this. So that's a beautiful gift. Um, they're classic black and white so that they will appeal to anybody. If you wanted to add some color, you could definitely can do that if you're an avid stamper and you wanna add color. But again, these are classic, they're simple, they'll mail for a single stamp when you go to use them. I do have the option of adding on the stamp set if you want, again, all of the proceeds. Absolutely all the proceeds are going directly to Martha. I've had enough people sign up already that I'm gonna be able to uh, present her with a big fat check and I'm super excited about that. Because in the midst of grieving your only child, which I cannot even begin to imagine, having uh, financial debt um, weighing on you from all of the treatments and all of the um, all the medical care, yeah, that would just be 
like the worst nightmare possible. So we're doing what we can. And together, we can do so much more. You know, one person doing a little here, one person doing a little there. We're combining it all to make a big difference for Martha. So I appreciate everybody who's already signed up. If you haven't yet, that registration is still open. Now, let me show you one more registration that I just opened up this week. And I probably need, hmm, there was a little cello bag for these. I end up getting things lost um, when I don't put things properly away. So my bingo is coming up on May the 6th, first Thursday in May. The new catalog will have just released two days prior. So all of my, um, well, let me show you about the registration first, and then we'll talk about bingo prizes because I do run my bingo a little bit different than when I used to run it as an in-person event. I am featuring this stamp set. If you're interested in it, you don't have to use this stamp set. Um, I'm using largely greeting stamps, and so you can substitute with your own greetings. But I will say, this is a lovely stamp set from the spring catalog. And I think it might have been overlooked. This is available through the end of June, which is one of the reasons I'm using it for my bingo event, because I don't have to worry about back orders and things. People are going to be going crazy with the brand new things. And I'm just kind of, you know, I, I like to get away from all that drama and just kind of wait for things to settle a little bit. <laughs> So um, welcome, Jackie and Susie. And yes, I saw that you have signed up for bingo and I'm super excited. So we play on Zoom. And so Susie, who's up in Washington State, is able to play with me down in Texas. And we have people who've registered in uh, Wisconsin and California. And it's just a, a really fun uh, girls' night out. So let me show you the projects that you're going to make because you're going to get... Um, a little swag bag and in your swag bag you're going to get a bingo board well they're actually little disposable cards now because I mail them out you're going to get a little embellishment pack and again these are things from our January to June mini catalog you're going to get uh, a couple of yards of the blushing bride and the basic white twine and some of these really fun um, resin heart embellishments, they are um, self-adhesive, super easy to use. And then you're going to get a full four by six sampling of this brand new party pattern party, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna get it wrong, it's a couple of peas. This is designer paper that is in the new catalog and it's a host only. So uh, typically you would have to spend at least $150 to get your hands on this paper. It's gorgeous paper. There's 12 pieces that you get. One side is black and white. The other side has lovely bright colors. It has a huge number of colors in it, which is one of the reasons I love it. I actually am in love with every single pattern on this, which is a little unusual. Typically I have, you know, certain patterns I kind of you know, put to the back of the closet as it were. But these are really, really super fun and they're bright, but they're soft as well. So they're not like in your face bright, they're bright and cheery. And yet there's also these very elegant, um, elegant patterns. So a really great mix. I also love, like here is this cheetah print is really popular. I know my oldest granddaughter, she's a big cheetah fan, so she would love that. Um, this Misty Moonlight, oh, I love, this is, we use this on one of the make and takes, and we use this on one of the make and takes, so it was hard to choose, you know, which patterns I was, we use both of these on a make and take, so, and, you know, sometimes we call these make and takes, to be honest, with this event, it's really more of a free class, because what you're going to get is all of these goodies, plus you're going to get um, everything prepped and ready for three fun fold cards and tutorials for them. <clears throat> so we play bingo first <clears throat> and then we do card making. So let me show you the cards for the class. <clears throat> this is a fun gate fold. I didn't do any stamping on the inside, but I probably will at the event. And here's those cute little hearts and there's your twine. So that's where you're gonna be using your goodie bag. Um, this is another, this is a Z fold. And see, I did use one of the little stamps from the stamp set here. And sending positive thoughts. I mean, you could send that to anybody. We need more and more of that. And there's two different patterns of this paper. I just love this paper. And then the third one is this little side flap. 
and I love this little uh, fun fold. And this says, just know that I'm here for you. And I've got, you know, a girl out in the rain because, yeah, sometimes things are just rough. And then you've got just enough room there to write a little message. But I was able to use two of these patterns of paper and, and everything is prepped and ready for you. So even you won't even be cutting your paper. I mean, it's truly prepped, ready for stamping and assembling because we have a lot to do that night when we're going to be playing bingo first. Now we play six rounds of bingo and each one you're going to get a, the winner is going to get a uh, gift certificate or shopping spree, however you want to term it, from that new catalog. So you can, you typically, the, the gift certificates run like $50, the next game it's 75, the next game it's 85, and they run up to over $100 for the gift certificates or shopping spree. So I love it this way when I'm doing these by Zoom. I used to have basket surprises that I would give out when I did this in person. But with this being long distance, I like it where people can get to choose whatever they want. And uh, that seems to be working really, really well. Okay, enough for events that are going on. Let's just take a quick review about some new in colors. So this is the one that I showed you last Tuesday. Um, this was a card we had done in my monthly meeting for what's called mystery stamping. This was the card I did for the meeting. And this is the one I did with you guys to showcase the new, um, ay, 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 what's the name of it? Um, ha, the new purple, Fresh Freesia. So this is the new Fresh Freesia and a new set of uh, dies. And I, no, I'm not using these dies today. Anyway, I used those dies on Martha's fundraiser. Really fun, fun fold. And I've got another fun fold for you today. Um, let me also review with you because I'm going to be using Pale Papaya again today. So on Thursdays, I do simple and stepped up stamping. So we started out with super simple um, stamping the background and um, doing just a little bit of color here. And this is the new Pale Papaya. I think it comes out a little bit more yellowy on camera. I think it's a little bit more orange. You know, when you get it in person, it's a little bit more peachy. Um, so anyway, this is a retiring stamp set um, with a new in color. So I'm kind of doing the same thing today. I'm using a different um, color combination. So this is the one that I went with on Thursday, Pale Papaya, Calypso Coral, and Basic Gray. Today, I'm going to go down and I'm going to use Pale Papaya, Mary Merlot, and So Saffron. We'll see how that goes. Let me just grab, um, let's see, I think I have maybe everything I need except for a Stampin' Blend marker. I want to show you what I'm doing with my sponges. So you know that I love to use sponging on my cards as I did here and here. And um, hey, Diane, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're liking the cards. Um, I have previously had all of, I've had a sponge dedicated for every single color. And we used to take these sponges and cut them up. Well, Stampin' Up! has retired these. So they are no longer, I think they might still be in the, in the store for like another 10 days or so, but, well, not even, yeah, about a week, but um, they are, they are, the sponges are not in the new catalog, and Kathy, yes, Stamping Bingo is still open for registration. So, what I'm going to be shifting to is these, um, these are the sponge daubers, and they've been in our catalog for a long time, but things are kind of shifting, and I think we're going to go with these. What I'm going to do is dedicate a sponge for each color just because I like to not be cross-contaminating things. So, you know, I probably should do the cutting and scoring first and then we'll do the stamping. So let me show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make two of these because I have two weddings coming up and I'm going to make a gift card holder and a card all in one. 
And many of you take my classes by mail and we oftentimes, I oftentimes give you a half pack of, of designer paper and I typically cut it for easy shipping. And so you end up with a package of 12 by six paper. And you may have some extra sheets of that sitting around. So I'm gonna show you what you can do with that size paper to make a really cool gift card holder card all in one. And there's something else I'm missing. What else? A piece of whisper. Basic white cardstock. Okay. Let's see, I thought I was I was flying to get ready. I had a lot of computer work this morning, and then I made a nice lunch for my hubby, sat down with him to eat, and yeah, it took too long. Okay. So let's take, um, we'll start with this one, and then we're gonna do this one. Um, so I'm gonna take my 12 by six piece of designer series paper, and I am first of all going to score it. So I need to move, let me see if I'm in camera. I want to move my, my cutting blade out of the way. I want to just use my scoring blade, which is always the lighter colored one. And I'm going to put this, in here and I'm going to score it at four inches. And then I could move this down and score it again at four, but I think I'm just going to flip it around here and score it at four again. So let me do this on both of these pieces of paper because you know, when you're doing this, you might as well just do it all at once. And I probably should have cut this first, but anyway. I'm scoring first and cutting second. So I'm just scoring at four inches. This is a 12 by six piece of paper. And then I'm gonna flip it over and score it at four inches again. And you wanna be mindful when you're using your scoring blade on your designer paper. I usually run over it a couple of times lightly. If you press too hard, it will cut because essentially a scoring blade is a blade that is dull. So you wanna be mindful of that. Now, I need to cut this down a little bit because I wanna be able to put this in an envelope. And at six inches, I'm not gonna be able to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to five and a half. And that way it's gonna be a standard card size and will easily go into my card or my envelope. And then I'm also going to turn it this way and I'm going to cut off one inch so that it's 11 by five and a half. Well, let's see. Hmm, my little arm is being a little bit stiff. Okay, so I was hoping I wouldn't have to open my arm on camera, but there we go. Okay, so this is gonna be cut down to 11. So instead of 12, it's gonna be 11. So I'm just cutting off one inch, and actually I didn't really need to take the arm out. I could have just gone there. Okay. So I have a couple of extra pieces here. I'm gonna save those. And I have this piece here. And now I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna cut it down to 11. So it's just, I'm taking one end off, a one inch piece. And then I'm going to go on the side and I'm gonna cut it at five and a half. Now, if you didn't need to put this into an envelope to mail it, like I'm actually going to these weddings, I could just put this on the wedding gift table and I wouldn't have to cut that little bit off. But, you know, no no biggie. It's just a half inch and that allows me to, um, to mail that. Now, one more thing I'm gonna do while I have my trimmer out is I'm gonna take my eight and a half uh, by 11 piece of basic white cardstock and I'm going to cut it down to eight, so instead of eight and a half, it's gonna be eight. And then I'm actually going to cut this at five. I don't need this, this is absolute trash. Uh, at least for me it is. I know some of y'all save every, every single bit, but um, for something like that, it's not gonna help me. So there's my five inch mark, and I'm going to cut at five. And this shows you that you can get two of these insides out of a single piece of cardstock. 
And then I'm gonna cut this one at five, and I will give you the measurements. I will print them for you, so that if you've missed them, you're not gonna miss out, because you're gonna love this when I put it together. And then we're going to score these at two and a quarter. Where am I? Two and a quarter here. So you can see why I, was, I said I have a lot to show you today, and this is gonna take a little bit more time. Partly because I'm making two at the same time, but I thought, well, you know what? I have two weddings coming up. It's just kind of, I'm going to show you two slightly different variations of the same card. Two and a quarter and then five and a quarter. So this is going to be the inside, which is going to form my little gift card holder uh, or cash. You know, I've gotten to where I really like giving cash. Maybe because I like receiving cash. Actually, although I do like receiving cash, it is kind of fun to see... I think I started seeing this, particularly with my grandchildren, when they would open up, um, you know, young grandchildren particularly, a gift card doesn't mean a lot to them. When they see that cash, their eyes just light up. They're super excited about the cash. So that's where I've kind of uh, changed a little bit of my gift giving strategies um, based on my grandchildren. Okay, so this is done. I can put this away. Just make sure I've not missed anybody's question. Okay, we're good. Now, let's start with the flowered one. You remember that I have these nice score lines on here. So let's find where the score line is, and you can just feel it, okay? And then you can run right alongside there on it, and I need a bone folder. So, grab my trusty little tool kit. I ran I ran these for sale uh, back in the spring. I may end up running these again at some point. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a nice crisp fold. And there you can see where this is going to open up. And then let's see how this is going to go inside there. And I'm going to go like this is my score line. And this is my other score line. And now that's gonna create a little flap for me to um, put my gift card holder or cash holder in. Now this is where I do want to use my Seal Plus. And the difference between the Seal and the Seal Plus is um, important. So the regular seal is kind of an aqua color and the seal plus is a darker blue. And it also has that little plus sign on it. So that kind of helps you distinguish between the two. And the seal plus is just that. So seal is a nice strong adhesive for paper crafts. However, if you need something super strong, particularly for a box, or in this case, something that's gonna have a lot of tension, um, that's where the Seal Plus really comes in handy because this little pocket, I don't want it to fly open when somebody reaches in there to get the cash or the gift card. So that forms a little pocket and let me just show you. So there's my, like if I were gonna be putting that in there, that would fit nicely or I could just um, fold some cash in half and pop it right in there. Now, before I do that, I want to show you the stamp set I am using, and if I can find it, here we go. This is a retiring stamp set. It is called Last a Lifetime, and it has some really, really beautiful greetings. So I'm going to do um, to the new Mr. and Mrs. on the outside, and on the inside, sending you our very best wishes. I could be, you know, do... Ex uh, Hoping you experience love and joy today, tomorrow, and always. That's another really nice one. And I will say, you know, these are beautiful for um, for uh, weddings, but they're also really nice for um, anniversaries. Okay, so let's see how this would work, if this would fit. I think it might, well, you know, it would fit. Now there are dies to go with this, but I'm not gonna actually use the dies. I'll show you the dies I'm gonna use instead. Okay, let's decorate this up a little bit. Now I have cut some tags, and I did this off camera because I knew it was already gonna take me a little while to put all of this part together. 
And you know me, I don't have a long attention span, so <laughs> I start boring myself. This is called Tailor Made Tags, and it's from the new catalog, and I think it's a must have for everybody. It is beautiful, beautiful stitched tags. Some that are a little bit straighter, and some that are a little bit more, um, some that are a little bit fancier at the top, which is the ones I'm using. And then you also have some little, um, I don't know what you call that little piece that covers the hole, as, or kind of, not covers the hole, but kind of gives you an outline of the hole. Um, these are really nice size for card making, as we're gonna use today. They're also really nice size for scrapbooking, gift tags, all kinds of cool things. So I've just gone ahead and run several of these. And what I'm going to do is put this, and I think I'm gonna do it like so sending you our very best wishes. I'm just going to stamp it in just a classic um, tuxedo black ink. You know, black and white is always so pretty for weddings. And so this particular paper, which is called True Love, and it's in the spring catalog, which means it's available all the way through the end of June. If you don't have it yet, I do believe it's a must have. And I am thinking that I might just do this. Oopsie, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. Like so for the inside of my card. Um, sending you our very best wishes. Super simple. The dies really make the difference. And there was another little stamp here. Where did it go? I had that little flower stamp. Hmm. Ha, ah, yes, here we go. So I could even add this little flower over here. Hmm, maybe I'll do the flower up here. Hmm, now let's try that and see how it goes. And we're going to use some blends to color this in. So let's see about that. Just a small little flower. Look how that's just so classic, so classic. The, the flower, um, the flower I'm going to do in our new pale papaya, super pretty. And then I'm going to do a little bit of um, So Saffron because that is my So Saffron pale papaya. We don't actually have Mary Merlot blends. So um, I'm gonna tap into my, um, my um, what do you call it? Old Olive, and the last time I was on camera with you, I showed you how Old Olive is the green that Stampin' Up! is recommending we use with Pale Papaya. So I think what I'm gonna do with the Pale Papaya and the So Saffron, I'm gonna use the dark So Saffron in the center of my rose. And let me just bring you a little bit closer here. Let me see if that gives you a little better view. So I'm gonna do the So Saffron in the center, and then I'm gonna bring a little bit of this Pale Papaya right along the outside of my rose. And you can see how that's a much deeper. It's really kind of, I know they call it Pale Papaya, it reminds me a little bit of apricot, although not quite as yellowy as apricot. Now I'm gonna come back in here with my uh, So Saffron and just kind of bring it a little bit more color. So again, just super classic. Now I'm ready to layer this up. And I think what I'm gonna do, I went ahead and ran some of these little guys. And I have a feeling I'm probably going to be running quite a few of those from time to time. And because you run, it runs four at a time, I just went ahead and ran a bunch. So let's see if I want to do that or if I want to just leave it. You know, you don't have to have a little piece on there. So I think I'm going to just leave it and maybe put a couple of rhinestones there. Now, if anybody wants to weigh in on this, I'd love to hear from you. And I am just using my, stamp, my Seal Plus. I already had it out. I'm not gonna, although I don't need the Seal Plus for this, yeah, I'm not gonna be switching back and forth like that because it's not um, it's not necessary. Now, I am going to lay this flat because, and I could do it up like this, but I'm going to do it down here. Um, 
this is the inside of my card, so I don't want to put this on dimensionals. Well, let's see. Okay, let's try again. Get it centered. Maybe I won't make both of these on camera because I'm going to end up taking too long. Okay, so now this is ready to go here. And then I'm going to show you how cool this is on the inside of our card. Hey, Simone. I'm so glad you joined us. There is, and I could, yeah, I think I'm going to do it on, uh, on the angle. I think that looks cute. Okay, now this is going to go on the inside of this. Va, va, boom, can we say. Now, look at what happens. This is where the magic really starts coming in. And again, I will say, when you're putting this on the inside of your card, I do recommend that you use the Seal Plus. So that's why it's just better once you start working on this project, just get your Seal Plus out and use it all the way through. Okay, this is gonna go right in here. Let's see where my, there's my fold and there's my fold. So there's the inside of my card. And looky here, so when it opens, then you open and there is your gift card. Okay, so let's see how we're gonna do the outside. We're gonna do a similar, oh, I hope I didn't use all my black ones. Where'd they go? Where did my black ones go? I cut several. I hope I didn't use more than one under here. Oh, it's on my, we will find it. Okay, so let's see about maybe using this right along there. Um, so this was that one inch piece that we took off and I'm liking using that. So let's go ahead and adhere that. And I'm gonna just kind of look around my space here while I'm yakking and see if I can uncover my other little black tag because I kind of need it. There we go. Now, before we go any farther, let's grab these little sponges and let's see what we can do by way of using this Stampin' Up! color scheme of pale papaya with a little bit of Mary Merlot. And we're gonna use a little bit of Old Olive Maybe we might bring in Old Olive, we may not. We may just leave it. I don't know that we have to do all the leaves. So let's start with, I think, a little bit of Mary Merlot in the center so that we get that deep color. Let me bring my Mary Merlot. Ooh, I hope, the, I hope I'm still with you. My uh, internet connection is showing a little bit of, oh, I'm back, okay, I can see you again. So you can see how elegant, you know, this is where this paper is so pretty. And honestly, I'm doing this for a wedding. You could do this for a graduation. You could do it for a birthday. Any kind of a celebration I think would work really well. And you see how quickly when you're using these sponge daubers, it's very, very quick. And you just put that, you know, you just pop it into your finger like that and then just sponge away. So there is the Mary Merlot. I'm gonna close this up so I don't accidentally pop my sponge in there. And now I'm gonna grab this pale papaya and I'm gonna kinda of go to town on it. So now I'm going to really add some color and look at how beautifully that pale papaya pairs with the Mary Merlot. I would not have known to put those colors together. And that's why I'm so grateful that Stampin' Up! puts these little color coaches out for us. And I've already had, I was talking about one of the ladies who had contacted me here on Facebook through uh, the messenger and said, hey, I would love one of those color coach thingies. And I said, well, I can send you the download. She said, well, I don't have a printer. And so I thought, well, you know what? If she's asking for it, there's probably other people. And maybe I need to figure out how I can print those and mail them to people. And as soon as I said that, uh, Jeanette chimed in on here on the Facebook Live and said, I would take, I would, I would be game for that. So let's just see what we can do on figuring that out. Because, you know, one of the things I love about the new end colors is I love working with them in different color combinations. 
you know, the end colors are gorgeous on their own, but the reality is we're gonna use them with the colors that we already have. We're gonna incorporate them into our existing awesome Stampin' Up! color palette. Isn't this a beautiful, beautiful color combination? I am loving it. And I will say, you know, I'm a quick and easy girl. I don't have a lot of patience to be doing really in-depth coloring. This is my kind of coloring right here. Grab a sponge dauber and a little bit of ink and boom, you know, you're not having to worry too much about staying in the lines. It's just done for you. Again, this is the True Love Designer Series paper. It is in the spring catalog, otherwise known as January to June mini catalog, and it is available all the way through the end of June. So um, Kay is liking the coloring with the daubers. Now, let me just show you. We haven't even put the front on, but look how it's already just, look at that. Then we open it up and there is the goodies inside. Now, um, I have not yet uncovered my black tag, so I may either have to sponge this or I may just add some, um, do one on camera here, which I'm trying to hurry. Sometimes that doesn't work for me, sometimes it does. And let's see. Also need, where did my ribbon go? Here's my ribbon. So I wanted to put some um, gold edged ribbon on here. And this is a retiring ribbon. This is the gold edged ribbon, but this is vanilla and this is white, which it's okay. But you can see where I've already been playing with the blends to see which of these colors I would like to add. And look at how pretty that is when you color it with the pale papaya marker. Now, and this is the blends. I could also do it with the So Saffron. It's part of my color scheme. But no, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and go with, sorry, I had to grab my other scissors. Go with the um, pale papaya. So let's see how much of this ribbon I'm going to need. Let's see if I can do a, Let's see if I can do it like this. Hmm. Okay, so if I do it like that, or, you know what, I think I'm gonna go right across here. I kinda like it going right across here. And I'm just gonna do it in a simple knot. So that's about how much I need. I believe that this ribbon is reduced in cost and price. So let me just show you how awesome this is to work with. This is the new Pale Papaya. Kay, thank you so much for sharing this. And yeah, I would love for you to go back and uh, find the, uh, watch the, the what's the word I'm looking for, demonstration in full. Now, when you color your ribbon with your blends, you always wanna use the side. You don't want to be messing with that tip. You wanna maintain the integrity of your tip so that if you ever need to get into a tight space, you can do that. Now, the nice thing about using the blends, it colors both sides with one fell swoop. And the other nice thing about this is when you color your ribbon with the blends, it dries pretty immediately, I mean, within a few seconds. And then it also adds a little bit of body to your, um, to the ribbon. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a ribbon that is from the last annual catalog, which is, well, still current, for a, a little, about a week or so more, and I'm taking a new end color and I'm making my own custom ribbon here. So I'm thinking that this is lovely. I do like that gold for um, weddings. Now we used to have this in white ribbon with silver edge and then the vanilla ribbon with the gold edge. The white with the silver sold out, you know, within the first week of the retiring list. For some reason, the vanilla doesn't seem to be as popular, but look at how rich that color is and look at how it's gonna look right there. I mean, is that gorgeousness or what? I think it's amazing. And I'm actually doing my card this way, but you could even do it this way and then, of course, have your greeting going the opposite direction. So that is an option for you. 
I do think this is an awesome fancy fold. Let's go ahead and close it and then figure out how we're gonna put the tag on the front. Um, yeah, Diane, um, if I am looping in and out for you, I apologize. Um, I lost the feed for just about a second or two. Um, hopefully I'm back on with everybody. And this, I'm not gonna tie super tight because I want um, the bride and groom to be able to just slide this and maintain um, you know, the, uh, the structure of my card without it having to um, get all, get all um, messed up. Okay, let me go back to the Girl Scout. Right over left, under and out, this is how you do a square knot. And then you go <laughs> left over right, under and out. I mean, anybody else on here that was a Girl Scout, that was how we learned it. And it works for a square knot every single time. Mary, you just got here. I'm glad you're going to uh, just watch the replay and uh, to see the beginning. So there is my lovely knot, my custom ribbon in pale papaya, and my colors, my flowers, are done in pale papaya with Mary Merlot, and that is going back to my Stampin' Up! provided um, color coach. And this is making a very elegant gift card holder, or I'm actually gonna just put cash in mine. So like I said, I have two weddings coming up. Now, let's see what we're gonna do next. I have a couple of different thoughts. Um, I could do just one layer of the tag and sponge it since I don't have my black layer and add a few rhinestones, which is kind of the direction I'm thinking we're gonna go. So let's see how this will work out for us. Again, this is the retiring, um, where'd it go? Last a lifetime. There are some really gorgeous intricate dies that go with this um, on a loop on my picture. So yeah, I think that's, Cappy, I apologize. Like I said, I'm getting good, um, I'm getting a good feed here today. So I think it might be on, on your end. Um, if you're in the San Antonio area, I know we have a lot of clouds today. To the new Mr. and Mrs. I'm just going to go like that. And then what I'm gonna do is sponge this a little bit. I'm gonna bring out my pale papaya ink again because that is the new end color that I'm trying to really kind of feature. And there's my little sponge dauber. So let's just see if we can add some ink around the edges, give it a little bit of color so that it stands out and doesn't just kind of get lost. And I think that this works because I've sponged the flowers. So um, sometimes this sponge effect works on um, a focal point and sometimes it doesn't. I think that's really, really looking lovely. I hope I'm in camera range. And then what I'm going to finish this off with, I think, my, my thought process before I started was some of these, oh yeah, look at those champagne rhinestones. Look how they just bring that out. So now what I wanna do is I want to pop this on in such a way that when the Mr. and Mrs. pull the ribbon off, it's not going to rip everything. So I think what I'm going to do, hmm, let's see, if I put dimensionals down here and leave it flat, uh, leave it um, loose up at the top, I think that it will work because I think they're gonna wanna keep this in their keepsakes because this will go in with their wedding cards. So this is just, you know, you can customize this to whatever colors you want. Again, if you were doing this for a graduation, you could do it with school colors. Um, if you were doing it for a birthday, you could do it with someone's favorite colors. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, could attach the, oh, you could attach the tag with the gold twine. Okay, there she has it, ladies and gentlemen. Gail has the winning answer here. Let me pop this over which I'm gonna to have to just pull it off for a minute. What I need is I need the knot down here. So
So let's see if I can just pop this without hmm, totally messing this up. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Whoopsie. It's a tight fit, but it will slide. Come on, baby. Come on, work with me here. Ah, there we go. Okay. Thank you, Gail, for weighing in on that. I think that is a perfect fit, is just to tie that on to the, um, to the ribbon. What I am going to do is, you remember these little guys here? I'm going to grab one of these because I think now it's going to, look how that pops. That little tiny piece is going to really pop. Now, if I'd been thinking, I probably would have pop popped this through my uh, machine with the adhesive sheet, but yeah, I wasn't thinking that far ahead. So there, look how pretty that little pop of black. Wow, that is a nice little contrast. So um, I don't think, maybe I do. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna do some show and tell with you guys today. And there was just a lot else to, um, there was a lot of other things to talk about, but I will show and tell. This is a little item that we were able to get from the new catalog. We were able to get this on the pre-order, on the demonstrator pre-order, and this is Simply Elegant Trim. And I love this because you get gold and silver. So this is going to be just the ticket. Thank you so much for suggesting this, Gail. And I like this because it has a little bit of body in it. And let's see if we can't just bring this through like so. I've doubled it. I've got the loop going through there. What I like about this gold is it has a little bit of body to it. So let's just bring that through like so. And then look how pretty that is is. Now I can bring this around my little ribbon here. And this is where, you know, this was a really quick and easy card to put together. Um, and you can take a little minute to add this little extra tag. And yeah, it might take me a little minute to kind of figure it out and finagle it around, but I think it's definitely going to be worth it. Look how pretty. I love it. I love it. You know, I have to love something if I'm gonna give it. So it's a good thing that this turned out. <laughs> Cause like I said, I need two of these. I will do the other one off camera and show it to you on Thursday. Uh, and you could just do that in a knot, but I did it in a bow and I'm really, really happy with the way it came out. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could add, um, you know, some green if you wanted to bring in um, a little bit of old olive there. But yeah, this is the color scheme that I went with. And let's just add a few of these and just bling this out a little bit more because it is a wedding card. And you know, I'm feeling pretty good about this because I am actually done with this. And I've got two June weddings. So I will be ready to go which is a good feeling. Well, this little guy is not, there we go. Okay, so I think I'm gonna grab one of these big ones, one of these big champagne rhinestones, look at there. And then I'm gonna go with a medium one over here. And then another one up here. And I think that's enough. I could add some to the flower heads you know, like maybe to the centers of the flowers a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I think with a wedding, you can just, you can afford to just keep going. <laughs> um, and now, you know what's nice about this is sometimes it seems to be a little bit impersonal to give cash, but I'm telling you what, there's nothing impersonal about this gift right here. This is, in my view, just the beauty of what we do in our card making. And again, this is a gift card holder. So I can take this off, just slide it, and I go inside and sending our very best wishes and then open that up. And this is where I would have my little gift card. 
that's just an old expired one that I use for demonstration purposes. But that's it, and that is just a piece of six by 12 paper is what I started with. And we took a half a sheet of cardstock for the inside little card and uh, a couple of our new tags. And I mean, this is really inexpensive to put together as far as supplies. But I think that that, you know, when you custom uh, color that ribbon, it has that little gold. So I do wanna encourage you, um, you know, we only have a week left of the um, retiring list. And so this ribbon right here, it's the gold edge 3 8 inch vanilla ribbon, I believe is what it's called. And I will put the link on. The champagne rhinestones are, you know, they're carrying over, thank God. And um, then the paper, you can get all the way through the end of June. And see this little piece here, this contrasting piece, that was just a scrap of leftover paper that I had. Uh, but I was able to use it, and um, I could even take this extra piece here. I might be able to figure out a way to put that on the envelope. But I think, honestly, I would probably just stamp the little flower here on the envelope. And it is um, just, I think it is very elegant. I think the black and white, what's nice is you can add whatever you want to the black and white. And um, it is a useful, um, fun fold. I keep getting out of camera, I think. Um, and like I said, it's really simple cutting and scoring. I will put together an inspiration sheet for you so that you can easily follow that. And I think that once I sign off, I'm gonna go ahead and put together my second one, which I think, um, yeah, I'm gonna do the same kind of thing with the black and white daisies and then have this on the inside. So we'll see how that one works out. And um, I will show you both. So I'm so grateful that you tuned in with me today. Teach Me Tuesday is all about learning. And um, I think today we, we talked about, um, well, firstly, using the Stampin' Up! Color Coach and one of our new in colors with a great color combination uh, that I would have never come up with, I can tell you. And then we also um, talked about um, using our sponge daubers for quick and easy coloring. Uh, we talked about making custom colored ribbon and uh, we also learned a fun fold. So really kind of a jam packed episode of Teach Me Tuesday. Oh, you know what that's gonna add there? I remember now, I was going to just add, because this is not gonna bulk it, I'm gonna add a little rhinestone there and a little rhinestone there so that when they open, that needs to be a medium one. When they open, oh yeah, just, it's just that little extra bit of unexpected delight. So I think this is actually a, an excellent um, surprise and delight, you know, and I will also say that um, when it comes to going to a wedding and having something like this, nobody else will have this. And um, your bride and groom are gonna open that up and go, hmm, I wonder if she made that. Isn't that beautiful? I think the groom is gonna be just as impressed as the bride. So that is Teach Me Tuesday for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate uh, your love and your enthusiasm for all things paper crafting. And um, I will put your inspiration sheet up. Some of you have already shared my video today. That helps me so much. I think it also helps the world, you know, being able to scroll through your Facebook and see something pretty being demonstrated. I mean, that's gonna brighten somebody's day. So sometimes brightening somebody's day means that I'm going to send them some happy mail. And sometimes it means I'm going to send them a crafty video. So thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate it ever so much. I will have your inspiration sheet on here later today. Um, it is three o'clock and I gotta make the second one and do a couple of photos by five o'clock. Uh, maybe a little bit sooner. Um, I'm going to, of course, have my cup of tea right after I finish with you guys. So um, thank you again for tuning in. And uh, if you watch this on replay, if you just put in the comments replay, uh, that helps me so much to know who I'm reaching or just kind of uh, being able to acknowledge uh, you and say thank you for tuning in and watching. 
And again, I appreciate you ever so much. Have a great day. I will be back here on Thursday for simple and stepped up stamping that will be really cool and gonna feature more in color fun. So thanks again, take care and God bless.